Welcome to another video and today we will learn about infinite limits. There are functions that when we evaluate their limit through table of values or by illustrating their graph, you will notice an increasing and decreasing pattern of the value that your function approaches as you move closer and closer to a particular x value. These cases when the function increases or decreases without bound is called infinite limits. Now consider we have the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches c. And this function right here, f of x over g of x, is already in its simplest form. If we try to evaluate their individual limit and we get any non-zero limit for our numerator and a zero limit for our denominator as x approaches c, the answer or the limit of this particular function is either positive infinity if the value of your f of x increases without bound, negative infinity if the value of your f of x decreases without bound, or DNE, or the limit does not exist, if your one-sided limits are approaching the opposite infinity directions. To understand this one, let's have an example. Say we are asked to solve for the limit of 1 over x squared as x approaches 0. If we try to use substitution for this particular function, what will happen is that our denominator will become 0 and 1 over 0 is undefined. You might think that the limit does not exist. However, if we use table of values, we can actually solve the limit of this particular function. So by use of table of values, we list down all values that are approaching 0 from the left and from the right. And then we evaluate their corresponding y value and observe what happens to our f of x or what is the behavior of our f of x. So if we substitute negative 0 0.5 to the function, our answer will become 4. So by substituting all of these, we get 100, 10,000, 1 million. On the other side, we get 4, 100, 10,000, and 1 million. I will not show the solution for this anymore because this is simply substitution. You just substitute the value of x to your function and then you get your corresponding y value. Now observe that as we move closer and closer to zero from both directions, the value of f of x is increasing up to the positive infinity. As we approach zero from the left and from the right, both one-sided limits are approaching positive infinity. Thus, we can conclude that the limit of 1 over x squared as x approaches 0 is positive infinity. As we can observe, the value of f of x is increasing without bound. So, if we move closer and closer to 0 from the left and from the right, say we add here negative 0 0.00001 or 0 0.00001, as long as we are not using 0 as our value, then we will observe an increasing pattern of the value of our f of x. So since our one-sided limits are both approaching positive infinity, or the values of f of x are increasing without bound, the limit of the function is positive infinity. Now in cases when the f of x, or the behavior of f of x, is decreasing without bound, we say that the limit is negative infinity and if the limit of our one-sided limits are not equal, then the limit does not exist. Say for example, your left-sided limit is approaching positive infinity and your right-sided limit is approaching negative infinity. So in that case, since your one-sided limits are not approaching the same thing, then the limit does not exist. Now, let's have infinite limit theorem number one. This states that if n is any positive integer, then the limit of 1 over x to the n as x approaches 0 from the right, so we have 0 positive, this means 0 from the right, equals positive infinity. So whatever value of n, as long as n is a positive integer, then the limit of 1 over x to the n as x approaches 0 from the right is positive infinity. Meanwhile, we have here the limit of 1 over x to the n as x approaches 0 from the left. So if your values of x are approaching 0 from the left, there are two conditions that we need to consider. 
if n is odd or if the exponent is odd, the answer is negative infinity or the limit is negative infinity. But if the exponent is even, the limit is positive infinity. So say for example, we have the limit of 1 over x to the fourth as x approaches 0 from the right. Since we are approaching 0 from the right, whatever the value of our exponent is, the answer will always be positive infinity. Now, another example is the limit of 1 over x to the fourth as x approaches 0 from the left. Since we are approaching 0 from the left, we have to look at the exponent of our denominator or exponent of x in our denominator. Since the exponent is an even number, the answer is positive infinity. Now, let's have another example. One, the limit of 1 over x to the fifth as x approaches 0 from the left or 0 negative. Since we are approaching 0 from the left and then our exponent is odd, the limit is negative infinity. Another example is the limit of 1 over x to the fifth as x approaches 0 from the right. Since we are approaching 0 from the right, the answer will always be positive infinity. Now, consider these two sets of functions. They are actually the one-sided limits of 1 over x to the 4th and 1 over x to the 5th. Now, since in our left side, we have the same value that our one-sided limit is approaching that is positive infinity, then we can conclude that the limit of 1 over x to the 4th as x approaches 0 is positive infinity. Meanwhile, on the other side, since as we can see, the one-sided limits are approaching the opposite infinity directions, the limit does not exist. So we say that the limit of 1 over x to the fifth as x approaches 0, dNe. Another infinite limit theorem states that if c is any real number and if the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 0 and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to a, where a is any constant not equal to 0, then we have the first condition. If a is greater than 0 and if f of x is approaching 0 through x values greater than c, then the limit of g of x over f of x as x approaches c from the right is positive infinity. Another, if a is greater than 0 and if f of x is approaching 0 through x values lesser, lesser than c, then the limit of g of x over f of x as x approaches c from the left is negative infinity. Another condition is if a is less than 0 and if f of x is approaching 0 through values or through x values greater than c, then the limit of g of x over f of x as x approaches c from the right is negative infinity. And if a is less than 0 and if f of x is approaching 0 through x values lesser than c, then the limit of g of x over f of x as x approaches c from the left is positive infinity. Now for infinite limit theorem number 2, there are four conditions that we need to consider and you might think that these are very hard to understand or memorize, but there is actually a pattern for the infinite limit theorem number two, so you can easily memorize it. So what you have to do is to look at the limit of your numerator, the limit of your denominator, and your c value. Now if your numerator's limit is any constant greater than zero, so what are values greater than zero? Of course, positive values. So if your numerator is positive, and your denominator is 0, so say for example 1 over 0, 2 over 0, 3 over 0, as long as your numerator is positive number or positive constant and your denominator is 0, look at the values that your x is approaching. So we have here c positive and c negative. Now if your numerator is positive and then you are approaching C positive. Since both of them are positive, then your limit is positive infinity. Now, for the second condition, if your 
limit of the numerator is positive and you're approaching C negative, since you are approaching C negative and you have positive in the numerator, positive divided by negative is negative infinity. So that is the pattern. Next, if you have values less than zero, so what are values less than zero? Values less than zero are, of course, negative numbers. So you have negative in the numerator and you are approaching C positive. Negative divided by positive is negative infinity. And for letter D, you have negative values for our numerator and you are also approaching C negative. Negative divided by negative is positive. So you have positive infinity. Now let's have an example. Let's have the limit of 3x over x minus 5 as x approaches 5 negative or 5 from the left. Now let's try to solve for their individual limit. So solving for the limit of the numerator, we get 15. So this is just substitution. 3 times 5 is 15. Now for the denominator, by substitution, we get the limit of x minus 5 as x approaches 5 from the left is 0. Now, since your numerator's limit is greater than 0 and you are approaching or your f of x is approaching 0 through x values less than c, then the limit is negative infinity. Since this is positive divided by negative, negative infinity. Another example, the limit of 2 minus x over x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the left. Now, try to pause this video and solve for the limit of this function. And if you already have your answer, you may continue the video. I think you already have your answer, so let's evaluate the limit of our numerator and the limit of our denominator. Our numerator's limit is negative 1, since if we substitute 3 to x, this will become 2 minus 3, and that is negative 1. For our denominator, we get the limit of x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the left. The answer is 0 since by substitution this will become 3 minus 3 and that is 0. Now, observe that the limit of your numerator is a negative number and you are approaching 3 from the left or 3 negative. Since we have negative divided by negative, what do we get? positive infinity. So the limit of 2 minus x over x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the left is positive infinity.